Davis steps under center. Gibson and McClendon behind it. Davis with motion by Richard. Will get the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh, he doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. Finley to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck the other way. At the 30. The 40. Wolfuck to midfield. Miles Wolfuck with the pick. The heels on the doorstep of an enormous victory. Left side of the line. Hood standing to Williams' is right. Williams going to throw. One-on-one. Davis has it. Touchdown. Carolina wins. Carolina is the Coastal Division champion. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio is going to take it for a touchdown. for the possible win. Snap, spot, kick away, high enough, long enough. It's good! It's good! Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter Burr. Good gosh, dirty. This is the Heel Tough Blog Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. It's your host, Anthony Pagnata, as always with you guys. Second edition of the podcast back on camera. Make sure you go back, check out the first edition of the podcast. We've got some news and notes. We've got a uh, uh, back and forth conversation about Mac Brown as a top ten. You can go ahead and call it an argument because it was an argument. It okay. wasn't back and forth discussion. I, I didn't. We we didn't get into a full on argument to the point of yelling. We, we had when, when have we had a moment like that on the podcast? By the way. Oh. Uh, not on this podcast. I don't think we've had one on the basketball podcast. We need no, to find. No, we did. We did when we had a heated because I remember I titled it "Heated Discussion About Cole Anthony" when he returned from. Injury. Wait, wait, wait. Was that heated discussion between us two, or was that heated discussion no. between you yelling at yourself no, about yelling, Cole Anthony? I was yelling at you. I okay. remember. Um, and then we kind of got into it when we hired Mac Brown because you were so against the hire at the time. Whoa, I was not so against the You were the so hire. against the was hire. was so against the speed of the hire, which we've gone back over that. We did that earlier this offseason. We let you hear the audio, everything like that. That's another addition if you want to go back and check that out. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't think – that was – I would say – that was a spirited disagreement. I don't think that that is qualified as an argument, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll probably get into some of those later on in the season, uh, later on in the offseason, especially probably when we get some of these uh, rankings in the preseason for Carolina team that is a considered a consensus top 10 preseason team by most of the publications. Uh, if you are one of the big magazine people, and we really hope you are here because we're going to have some of those guys on uh, you know, throughout the month here so make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for that but Carolina team that uh, is going to be replacing a lot of production on the offensive side that's something you're going to hear a lot of over the next couple of months as we go you know sort of get prepared uh, for this upcoming season people start debating whether or not Carolina has a chance to uh, win the ACC Coastal has a chance to challenge Clemson and ultimately if they have a chance to crack the college football playoff there's going to be a lot of reference to the guys that Carolina Carolina lost and the most production that leaves this Carolina team is at running back two guys that last year combined for almost 3,000 yards of offense from scrimmage 33 total touchdowns a year ago Michael Carter Javante Williams both gone to the NFL and uh, it leaves some question marks at the position that we're going to be breaking down today that is the running back position Um, you know it's an interesting group it was one that we talked a lot about before spring camp now things are really going to turn up as we get ready to go towards fall camp we're going to start sort of seeing this depth chart work itself out here there's one guy at the top that I think we know for sure at this point is going to at least contribute in the backfield. There's another guy that we're almost pretty certain will contribute there, and then there's a group below that that they are still trying to figure out who will be battling for carries as that third, fourth guy. Uh, but first, uh, you know, you, you look back at the production that they had a year ago. 
from that running back group. And I think one of the things that a lot of people are going to ask is, what is the level that Carolina needs to be able to get to this season to have success? Because I don't think any of us think that this team is going to be as successful as they were on the ground a year ago. Even with a veteran offensive line, you lost two of the better running backs statistically in your program's history. So I think it's going to be a a pretty arduous task to replace both of those guys. But I think there's a good group back there. But what do you see that area that Carolina has to be able to get to when it comes to running the football? Is it too much to ask for one 1,000-yard rusher? I think it depends on how quickly one of these guys gets established. So... Let's just say this, Let's and we'll start by talking about him because this is the first guy we're going to talk about. The guy that I think most people will look at and say, if you're looking for a leader of this group right now, it's Ty Chandler. Yeah. It's your transfer from Tennessee. He's got the experience, played in the SEC, so look, he's not going to be afraid of physicality. He's not going to be afraid of some of the veteran defenses that he's going to face uh, at you know, the ACC level. I mean, look, he's faced those year in and year out in the SEC. He's probably faced better defenses than most of the ones he's going to see in the ACC this year. Uh, You know, uh, 2,511 yards of total offense and 16 touchdowns in his four seasons at Tennessee. Good, not great, but is a guy that came in, immediately contributed at Tennessee. The biggest thing for him, when you look back at his career at Tennessee, one, always looking over his shoulder. They were always, like Tennessee has been for a long time, now they are not satisfied with the amount of production that they feel that they're getting so they try to look over their shoulder they're really just f- trying to find solutions elsewhere on an offense that one is terrible because they keep changing coordinators every other year he had three offensive coordinators in his four years there and two they can't find a quarterback that can throw the ball more than five yards without throwing an interception so I, I think with him being in a more stable offense, with him being behind a veteran offensive line, remember, Tennessee's another one of those teams. I don't think they're on the level of Florida State, but when was the last time that you really felt confident in the unit that Tennessee rolled out on their offensive line? It's been a, it's been a while. So I think being in that system and, you know, but really, I think being able to showcase some of the stuff that he maybe wasn't able to showcase as much at Tennessee. I think he's going to catch the ball a little bit more out of the backfield than he did there. I think he's going to be able to get in open space a little bit easier. I think that's going to allow him to succeed. I think that's probably the guy that you're looking at if you're looking for a 1,000-yard back. But I, I don't know. Is there somebody else that you look at in that group, or is Chandler probably that guy that you're looking at? I mean, I think Chandler is the guy, sh- should be the guy, and that's why, I mean, Mac Brown made it pretty known in, in the offseason. They're at a position where they can pick whatever transfers they want to entertain. Mm-hmm. They they picked Ty Chandler to entertain. Now, granted, he showed interest in us, but they, on the other end, you know, showed interest as well. So I think – I think maybe asking a thousand yard rusher is too much right now. Maybe after we see them, you know, at, at Virginia Tech, we'll have a better idea. I do think this offense has to average 150 yards on the ground, and if they can get a 4.5 yard per carry, I think that's healthy. If they can get to that, it's not going to start off like that. I don't think. I think right. this will be a running game that is a work in progress that is going to be better by the middle part of the season. And look, if this, if they, if they have to throw the ball in September. I think Carolina can maintain putting the, the game in Sam Howell's hands. You got that stretch in October where you got Miami and Florida State back-to-back weeks. You got to go to South Bend. They got to be able to run the footballs in those games, in my opinion, for them to win those games. So if they can pro- if they can progress to getting 150 yards on the ground, four and a half yards per carry every time they touch the football, I think that's healthy considering you're losing two 1,000-yard backs. Yeah, and I mean, look, it starts up front. Those guys are going to have to do a good job, and we're going to talk about that offensive line unit here in you know the next couple editions of the podcast but I think that you've got this this is the thing about this group that they've got back there they're not overly experienced getting Ty Chandler was huge but it's a group that has some talent we've seen some guys that have flashed now it's about expanding upon that Um, I, I think you're probably right I think 140 a game would probably be about that that would probably be a safe area where you could say okay if we get to that number our offense probably has the ability to throw the football well enough to win games but you know I I think you're gonna have somebody I feel like at some point that is going to step up I don't think I don't know if there's going to be a guy that's going to end up reaching that thousand yard mark but I think one of the big things is is if it is a split 
committee like it was two years ago with Antonio Williams being that third guy. Can you get all of your guys to somewhere around 300 yards? If you can, if it's a three-back system, you probably feel relatively confident in what you've got back there. And I think the other aspect is, I don't know how much more of it we're going to see, probably not a lot, but I think that there will, there could be points at this early in the season where they would run some read option to try to get Sam Howell moving. That that could be a way where look, if they're really struggling to run the football that much, they could put it in his hands. They could try, you know, some jet sweep stuff. They've got athletic guys like Chaffrey Brown, like Josh Downs. I don't think it's something they want to do, but I think one of the things that we've seen about this team and hearing them talk about wanting to be, you know, Mac Brown has said it multiple times, wanting to be similar to Oklahoma. They believe that in order for this offense to be at its best, they've got to run the football or well, else it's just not gonna live up to I think that's evident in their big wins last year. Their wins against ranked opponents, which were NC State, Virginia Tech was ranked at the time, and Miami, what did they do? They lined up and they shoved the football down all those streams, all those teams throughout, especially that Miami game. You look at the games that they didn't win, they couldn't run the football for the majority of the game at Florida State in that first half. They couldn't run the football well, they couldn't against, do anything against offensively. Notre Dame. And now granted, right. A&M, there wasn't – you didn't have Carter and Williams in the backfield, but they couldn't even get the push up front in that game either. So I think – and I've said it since we got to see this offense in for, you know, enough to di- dissect it. This is a run-first offense. This is a – what Sam Howell's doing is an extension of them being able to run the football successfully. So that's why when we talked about when we previewed the quarterback position, if they can't run the football – then I don't think Sam Howell is going to be as good as he's been the first two years. If he is, then give this guy the Heisman Trophy, build him a statue outside of Keenan Stadium, because this offense isn't designed for him to do that if they can't run the football at a, at a, at a consistent basis. Well, although if they, if they don't run the football and he still puts up ridiculous numbers, they're probably going to be like 9-3. and three. He probably ain't winning the Heisman anyways. And, and that's, but. that's my thing. If this team wants to get where they want to get to, they're going to they're gonna have to be able to run the football. And look, uh, like I said, you've got that experienced guy. We talked about Ty Chandler. There's a group behind him, though, that while they don't have the experience, this is probably the most inexperienced backfield that Carolina is going to have since 2017. Yeah. And that was a group. Now, that group was unbelievably inexperienced. Jordan Brown was your leading returning rusher. He ran for 45 yards, and he did that in, in pretty much in the bowl game. Good God. So... You're talking about now, I mean, look, you've got DJ Jones, who, you know, flashed in the game against Western Carolina last year. He would have started the Orange Bowl game if he doesn't break his foot the week of the Miami game. He, he would have been Carolina's starter. They had they have pretty much come out and said that. Uh, instead, it goes to British Brooks. You know, he did an okay job. Again, he's a... He's a, a walk on. He's not a guy that you're turning to and saying, "Well, this guy should be out here running for a buck twenty and two touchdowns." I, I don't. That's not realistic expectations for him, especially against a team in Texas A and M that came in as one of the best run defense teams in the entire country throughout the entire season. And as you mentioned, it didn't help that they didn't get great push up front. Um, but I mean, look, there's a there's a group behind you know Chandler that I, I think poses some some interesting options. I think DJ Jones is probably that guy that we're looking at right now and we're saying, okay, he's probably the other guy. The big thing for him is health because even in the spring, he was banged up. They didn't know if he was going to play in the spring game. He did, but didn't really carry the ball a whole lot. So I think the big thing for him is can he stay healthy? Because I think from what we've seen, he's probably got the most raw talent of the group. He's the more complete of the backs that Carolina's had. Elijah Green's a heck of a player. He's fast. One problem for him is he never caught the football out of the backfield in high school. That's one of the main things he's been having to work on where DJ Jones did that. So it feels like he's probably that guy that is going to be that number two, but I still think there's some uncertainty there. And then you're talking about guys like Josh Henderson, who you're really high on. You've liked what you've seen from him. I think if you're looking for a guy that's going to bring you, you know, Ty Chandler's kind of going to be what Michael Carter was. He's going to be that slippery, fast guy that if he gets in space, he could cause problems. He's going to catch the ball out of the backfield. Josh Henderson's that guy that I don't know if he's 
going to be as physical as Javante. That's asking a lot because Javante was, uh, I mean, he was a throwback running back. You don't see guys that usually run as hard as he does anymore. But he's a guy that runs with a little bit of an edge. Yeah. He's been there a few years in the system now, and he showed some decent things in the spring game. Um, and again, you know, we talked about on the last edition of the podcast, don't put too much stock into the spring game. But I am going to say this. The fact that he saw the carries as early as he did tells me that they value him in high regard. And then the other guy that I think is in this conversation, and then we'll kind of talk about these three, is Caleb Hood. Caleb Hood came in true freshman. I think some people were wondering, you know, what is this guy going to do? He was a quarterback at the high school level. Well, first of all, he is one of the more successful running backs, uh, or excuse me, quarterbacks at the high school level in terms of using his legs on the ground. That was one of the best aspects of his game, one of the main reasons that Richmond was able to take down a guy that's on this roster, Drake May and Myers Park, one of the best teams in the state in the final game that, or the final win, I should say, of the career of Caleb Hood at the high school level. And uh, look, he came in in the spring game, and this is another thing. I mean, he, he with true freshmen, it's interesting to watch how they play in that game. He really seemed to take it serious. He ran hard. Yeah. He's definitely a guy that I think is going to be a factor, and and, you know, look, I think he's he's probably the guy out of this group that I think we know the least about, but at the same time, he can end up being the best player because we just don't know a whole lot about him at the position. Yeah, I mean, you look at his build, 5'11", 230. I mean, he's he's a grown man as an 18-year-old, and he plays like one with the mm-hmm. physicality he brings um, to that running back position. And I think, you, you know, you mentioned the comparison with, you know, Michael Carter. I think... I think Carolina, whoever it is, do they need a home run threat mainly to take the ball, you know, 60 yards for a touchdown? I don't think so. I think they just got to have guys that can just move the chains on second and second and three or third and two. If they can get those tough yards, I think I think that changes the way you think about this offense. If they can, if if they have to be more pass oriented, you just don't want to get in a situation like we were in 2017 where. Even in obvious running downs, we couldn't run the football. I think right. that I think that's the biggest that's that's the nightmare scenario is can we get into running downs and not be able to run the football? Yeah, and I, I'm going to tell you, I, I think with Henderson and and Hood, I think one of those guys is going to emerge as your short yardage back if you need him. I think Chandler, Chan, look, Chandler's played in the SEC. He has, if you go and watch some of his highlights, he can run with an edge. It's not where he thrives, but he's a guy that I think in, in, you know, especially early in the season, if you need to put the ball in his hands on third and one, third and two, he could probably pick up the yards that you need. But I think you're right. That's something that we've seen and really, I don't think we've really valued enough over the last couple of years with the guys that we had in that backfield that were able to move the chains consistently. I mean, there were times where, you know, just from some of the past experiences, this team would run on third and five and we're like, what in the hell are you doing? Then it ends up working out and you're like, okay, all right, you got Javante, remember? You got Javante, you got Michael Carter. This year, I think it's going to be a little bit different where you may have to lean on your quarterback in some of those short yardage situations to go ahead and make those throws. But I do think the guys are there. Um, you know, with Hood, I think the biggest thing with Hood is, w- w- you know, can he pass protect? That's one of the other really big things that you've got to realize you're losing with the guys that are gone. Michael Carter, he was he had his moments where he was good. He had his moments where he struggled. Javante Williams was a phenomenal pass block, pass protector as a running back in the backfield. So, you're who steps up in that role? That's the biggest thing. Can you get somebody that can buy in and want to be the type of blocker that he is? I think there's guys that are capable of it. It's just seeing it actually play out. And I think that's the biggest concern. But, you know, you look at that group of three that we talked about right there, DJ Jones, Josh Henderson, Caleb Hood. Who do you think ends up being that number two guy, and do you think that that's enough, or do you think they might need that three-man rotation? I think at Virginia Tech, it'll be D.J. Jones, but I think when you finish up the season at NC State, I think I think it will be Caleb Hood. I do think as the season progresses, if he gets, if, you know, it, and of course, if he gets, if he is, in my opinion, he's going to earn the reps. If he gets to play in time, you can just tell that a kid's a football player and he can do whatever you ask him to do. He's a football player. No matter what he ask him to do, he's going to be able to do it. Um, 
but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a three-man platoon for the whole season because they mm-hmm. never abandoned that in the first year with Mac Brown in this offense. They kept all three. They all just had different roles, and maybe that's what Carolina needs. Maybe that right now because you don't have two 1,000-yard rushers in your backfield in the second-round NFL draft pick, maybe you just need guys that have certain roles in the offense, like a first down, second down, hell, a third down running back situation and if, 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 if to make it work. Glad I'm not Phil Long is going to be the guy to figure all that out. Yeah, I, I think you're just I, – I, what I really think is going to end up happening here is you're going to see a lot of let's ride with the hot hand. And that was something that, at times, Carolina had that in the past under Larry Fedora, even to a certain extent under Butch Davis. Yep. And there were moments where they went away from the guy that – was having the best game or having success. I don't think Carolina is going to be that way this year. I think if, let's say, DJ Jones is your breakout guy, I don't think they're really going to worry about, well, we got to try to keep Ty Chandler satisfied. If yeah, he's no. your guy, they're going to go with DJ Jones. And There's enough depth in, the, in, the, in that running back room that if someone right. wants to transfer, Mac Brown isn't going to get his feelings hurt. They'll let him leave. Right, and I mean, Ty Chandler's not going to transfer. He's a senior anyways. Um, but I, I'm with you. I think... In an ideal scenario, Carolina would like to get a two-man group that they roll with. You have that third guy that's kind of there. I mean, we saw it with Antonio Williams. Part of that was that they didn't abandon Antonio Williams. The other part of it was that Javante Williams got banged up at the end of that 2019 season, and he had no choice but to step up. So you always want to have those guys ready. Um, I I think, you know, Henderson's probably the guy that I think is getting slept on the most here uh, just because, I mean, I think everybody's really infatuated with Caleb Hood, but this is is a really solid player. That's my guy. guy. Yeah, exactly. And he's I, I believe he's definitely a guy that, I mean, he's still there at Carolina. There's a reason why he stayed around because, it, as you said, it's very easy for guys nowadays to just say, you know what? I know I'm not going to see the play in time that I want. Let me hit the transfer portal. So I think he's still an interesting name to keep an eye on. You know, there's three other guys that are on the roster. We'll touch on them really quickly here before we get out of here. You got British Brooks, uh, Elijah Green, and then Kamaro Edmonds, who's interesting. He's coming in as a true freshman, uh, comes in, finished up his spring season at Hivelock High School. He's a bigger back. He's got some really good sides on him. If you're looking for a guy that could be like Javante Williams, that's probably your guy the biggest thing for me with him is is he's gonna come in he didn't have the early enrollee training you know going through the off the 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 weight training all that kind of stuff that the early enrollees got I wonder how quickly he'll be able to adjust Uh, running back is one of those positions where you just I don't know why because I don't think that the transition from high school to the college level is that is that different Maybe I'm I'm not you know as well versed as some of the other people, but I don't see that as a position that you know like offensive line, like defensive line. You usually have to put the size on, especially with the size that he is coming in. But for some reason, they've never really been the most productive guys out of the gate as true freshmen. So I don't know how much he factors in. British Brooks, again, he did a lot for the team in that Orange Bowl game. I think Carolina is going to give him the chance, but I just don't think he's on the same level as those four guys that we've talked about ahead of him. Those are great uh, special teams guys. I mean, and, and look, I think he's one of those guys that if you start having some of your guys at the top go down, which is which is possible. I mean, as we've said, DJ Jones has, has been injury prone at times. You don't really know. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know a ton about the injury history of – Ty Chandler. From what I've seen, he looks like a pretty durable guy, but you never know, especially, you know, coming off of, you know, the season that they had last year. This is the first time that they've gone, you know, this is after a year that was not quite as strenuous in terms of the weight training, everything like that. Guys are getting back in the weight room, so you never know. Guys have to be ready to go. But I just, I don't know. It doesn't seem like from what I've seen, especially here as we've gone through the spring and then watching that spring game, it doesn't look like he's quite on the same level as those other guys. The staff doesn't seem to have him, uh, you know, in those battles. And then same thing with Elijah Green. And Elijah Green, it makes sense. You know, he came out of a high school where he never caught a pass out of the backfield. Never ran a route coming out of the backfield. Didn't know how to. So he's had to learn how to do that. Um, You know, I I would imagine that that means he's probably not the greatest pass protector either. So that's probably another area of his game that they've been working on him with. Um, So I would say if you're talking about that group, 
The guy that maybe has the chance to come out of there is Kamara Edmonds, but I really think that it's going to be this foursome that we're going to be talking about here. And here's the main thing that I'm looking at. With this group, I don't think this group needs to be great. Carolina brings back their starting quarterback, Sam Howell, one of the best in the country. You bring back a guy that he has a pretty good rapport with at wide receiver in Bo Corrales. You got guys that he's had, you know, he, he built some – rapport with a year ago in Chaffrey Brown, Emory Simmons, Josh Downs. Got some talent out there that I think makes you feel pretty comfortable with that group. If this group can be middle of the ACC, I think probably around fifth or sixth best in the ACC, I think that's probably a pretty safe area for them, in part because there are some really good running backs in the ACC. But the other part of it is I really think that it's going to take these guys some time to get acclimated. I think talent-wise, especially Ty Chandler, there are a lot of people that think he might, and I don't know how this is. I mean, look, I think he's a heck of a player. I saw some lists that had him ranked as the top running back in the ACC this year. I'm not not seeing that. No. Not yet. But I think that that's the guy that you're going to lean on heavily early on. But I think we've both kind of come to the conclusion that barring something shocking, you're probably going to lean on quarterback Sam Howell a lot early on. Yeah, Um, and I think you can in September. I do think if they want to make it to Charlotte, they're going to have to be able to run the ball against Miami. Again, granted, Notre Dame isn't a conference game this year like it was last year. But when you go to Notre Dame, um, NC State's going to be you know a team that's going to be a trendy pick to win eight or nine games. They got to be able to run the football in those games. He can beat his. We can beat you know Georgia Tech, Duke, and stuff throwing the football. Right. But if we want to, we want to be a serious contender to make the college football playoff. You got to be able to run the ball. Yeah, you got to establish a running game in order to win those big games on your schedule. I, I, I 100% agree with you. It was one of the big reasons why they struggled in that game against Florida State last year. Got to be able to get that game on the schedule this year. Uh, you would think at this point from reading some of the preseason hype, you probably got to get that game at Miami too. I mean, there's not much margin for error. And I think that the big part of it, if you want to keep this offense up there, which a lot of people think they can, a lot of people still think this offense can be really, really good, one of the best in college football. We're going to find out how good of a coordinator Phil Longo is and if this scheme is literally plug and play. And I also think we're going to find out a lot about how good some of these recruits are that they're bringing in. I really think this is going to show you what type of guys Mac Brown is bringing in. If if they're able to come out and have a lot of success right out of the gate early on in the season, then you should feel pretty confident that this guy's a really good talent evaluator. He yeah. knows who he's bringing in. He has guys that fit his offense, and I think there's a chance. But again, I think that all is going to lie on Ty Chandler. What does he do out of the gate? I don't know if any of these other guys are ready to shoulder the load and carry this team. And look, we know it. You're going up against a team that if there's one thing that they still do great, at Virginia Tech is stop the run. They did it the last couple of years against us. They've done. They've gotten it done in the trenches. Now, last year, Carolina, towards the end of the game, wore them down and was able to take over. This year, you're not going to have the guys that you had in the backfield last year, though. But do you have enough talent to be able to do that in that first game of the year? We're going to find out. So that's your look at the running back position, guys. Again, we're going through position group by position group. The next group we're going to go through, wide receivers, tight ends. We're going to lump those together here on the podcast on the uh, article side of things we will not. You'll have the wide receivers. That'll be separate. We'll do the tight ends uh, as a separate one from them like we've normally done it. But for podcast purposes, we are going to lump them together. And then we'll finish up with the offensive line before heading over to the defensive and special teams uh, sides of the football. Um, Again, go back. Check out the quarterback edition. We've got that up there uh, in our last edition of the podcast. Uh, You can check it out. Any of your podcast sites. So if you're people that like to listen to the podcast, still putting all of those up. You guys can check all of that out, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, any of those, you can check it out there. Um, at, say, you know, on the video platform, again, we're back full video for most of these ones going forward. We're going to have some interviews that we'll sprinkle in there that are not going to be on camera. Those will be the waveforms that we've been doing for a while now. Other than that, 
pretty much every one of these is going to be on video. We're going to make sure that we're getting you guys back into the video podcast mode so that you guys can get ready for the season. As we get a little bit closer, these ones, when we're doing the previews, we're not going to have the graphics on them, but as we get a little bit closer, we're going to start putting together some of those graphics for the games whenever we hand out players of the game, stuff like that. We'll have all those graphics back later on in the year uh, for what is going to be an extremely exciting year for Toriel football. The best way to check all that stuff out, the Facebook page, uh, that's where you can check out all of the great podcast editions we put out. Uh, you know, the links for the uh, audio podcast, put out the links uh, for the video podcast. Of course, that's where you're watching right now, so make sure you like and follow that. And of course, that's where you find all the stuff from the website we have all the articles on there make sure you guys go and check out heeltoughblog.com right now some great stuff up there uh recruiting wise we've got uh you know a bunch of guys that are heading towards decisions carolina's hosted some major guys over the last month or so uh on campus uh they got some guys that are coming up on some big time decisions and guys that are going to kind of make and break this class for carolina they put together a solid class so far but in order to get to the level that i think mac brown and and these fan base you know that this fan base wants to get to this is a big class for them they're trying to piece it together and they've got some really key four and five stars that are closing in on making their decision so we'll have you covered on that front we'll have previews of those big time announcements if we get you know announcement dates set in stone beforehand and of course we'll have you covered uh after the commitments as well give you a breakdown of the players everything like that go back check out the guys that have committed within the last month we've got all those up there connor harrell's on there Bo Atkinson's on there, Justin Kanyuk, and Marcus Allen. All four of those guys are on there. Those are the most recent guys that are committed to the class, so you can check all of those guys out. And then, as, of course, as we go throughout the season, we'll be once again going through and scouting these guys, giving you a look at these guys, because some of these guys weren't even on the radar for Carolina the last time that uh, Carolina or the last time that these guys were playing on the high school football field so we'll be doing that again for you all on the website uh, fo- you know in terms of you know football uh, upcoming season we've got all the stuff that's going up right now the position previews we're going a little more in depth than we're even going here on the podcast so make sure you guys go over and check those out we've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff coming up as we get closer to this season breakout players who do those every year we're going to do those on the podcast again this year but we're also going to put them up on the website all those great pot or all those great articles uh will be available for you same thing on the basketball side of things bunch of stuff going on basketball wise right now um you know some great recruiting stuff carolina is still hitting the recruiting trail hard they like toriel football hosted a bunch of guys in the month of june there's some other guys that they offered in the month of june that they're really pushing hard after and of course they are still doing some work in the transfer portal you can check out all that stuff josh has you covered over on the website and if you want to check out the podcast there you can do that as well there's two tabs at the top one for the heel tough blog podcast one for the four corners podcast you can check all that stuff out on the website heeltoughblog.com so that wraps up for this edition of the podcast want to thank josh for co-hosting with me want to thank you guys for watching and listening and as always go tar heels